Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode we are going to try to take care of contracts to Duna and Eve. The Duna one has to be a uh, planned flag therefore a uh, Kerbald mission and we also have an Eve contract that doesn't have to be manned, doesn't have to be Kerbald and will be a probe mission I think would be the best way to do that. The question is, which one are we going to do first? Even I don't know right now. We're going to have to go to the tracking station to see which one gets into the right position with respect to Kerbin first. So let's do that. We also have that Explore Jewel contract that might be interesting. Basically, what I'm doing right now is saving up so that we can upgrade the R&D building because right now we're sort of at a, uh, at a wall in terms of our R&D. We can't uh, add any more science to it. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, that is the priority. So we do have the Jewel contract, and if it so happens that we get into the right position for Jewel, I'll keep an eye on that as well. So the right position is for Eve. Eve has to be behind Kerbin by 54 degrees. Uh, for Duna, Duna has to be ahead of Kerbin because it's in a outer orbit uh, by 45 degrees or so. Jewel has to be ahead of Kerbin by 96 degrees. So it's an interesting combo here. It looks it looks like either Jewel or Duna. Probably Jewel actually. Okay, well that changed my plans somewhat. A probe mission to Jewel first. Sounds fine. Uh, but while that's going on, we'll have the other missions take place because Sending a probe to Jewel takes a long time. It takes like a well, it takes like about 300 days, 270 to 300 days to get to Jewel. This is about 96 degrees, I think. And so, uh, what it looks like is going to happen is we'll send the probe out to Jewel first, but we won't wait till it gets there. We'll time warp a little bit, get to the position for Duna, and send a probe to that. But we won't wait till it gets to that. We'll time warp a little bit more and. Uh, have Eve in position so we can send the probe to Eve. So we're going to be multitasking and so yeah but perhaps we don't need to use two different probes. Well it'll be a probe to Jewel and a probe to Eve. Those can be roughly similar maybe and then or maybe we need two probes to Eve since we have to uh, land on Gilly and land on Eve. It'll be easier to do with two probes. Uh, but we have to send the Kerbal mission to Duna, so that's a separate issue. All right, uh, let me go to VAB and see what we can do about this. So this is our budget for a Jewel flyby, which is all we need to do for that contract, right? All we need to do for the contract is achieve. Well, okay, we have to achieve orbit around Jewel, but Jewel will take care of that for us. We're going to air break at Jewel, and uh, transmit or recover data from space around Jewel. So uh, it's a flyby uh, with an orbit, but uh, Jewel is going to take care of the orbit. It's its atmosphere will slow us down into orbit. Um, so that's not a problem. And uh, important to note that when I say budget, I mean budget. In other words, this is as much Delta V as we're planning for here. Uh, we're not, I'm not saying that this is the least you could use. The whole point of a budget is that this is the most you can use. Right. Uh, I, I do personally like to add some padding in for unforeseen disasters, but assuming that you do everything right, this is the most you get to use. Um, and so somebody said that they can achieve curb and orbit with uh, less than 4,500 meters per second. Great. Yes, that's what you're supposed to do. Um, so uh, important to note that when, uh, when we talk about a budget, that uh, this is a limitation uh, and so we want to leave some room for mistakes and all that and in fact I, I might be even more generous than what I write here sometimes because I can get distracted while trying to think of things to say for instance. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to budget 6,900 so I'm going to try and create a rocket that has 6,900 and I think that'll be uh, sufficient to get into uh, the Joule system and into orbit around Joule. Uh, it, I might end up with a little bit more than that. Of course, uh, we can't size the tanks perfectly, and sometimes it's just more efficient in terms of the cost to make a larger rocket. So we'll see. All right, uh, so let me get down to building the rocket, and then I'll come back to you with what I've got. Okay, so this is what I've got so far, and we're using the Rocket Max 48 7Ss again. 
and uh, well this thing has about 4400 meters per second of delta v which is overdoing it a bit it really can't uh, help itself in Kerbin's atmosphere though because it's uh, the thrust weight ratio isn't enough, but it's certainly enough for an interplanetary transfer. You don't need a thrust weight ratio of 1 to do an interplanetary transfer. And so this thing has about uh, 0 0.5 to 0.6 initially before it burns some of its fuel. Uh, after that, it uh, gains more uh, thrust weight ratio, of course. But uh, so it re really wouldn't be safe to rely on its delta V inside the atmosphere. But what this could mean is that we can transfer it to some of the other moons of Joule to do experiments. Though, honestly, we don't have too much. We've got the Science Junior and the two Mystery Goos. The only thing we could really do around them is the thermometer. That's the only other scientific experiment we've got, and we've got all of them here. Um, so that's a downside. Another issue is, I mean, I could put parachutes and try to bring it back. Uh, we can't really put one of the parachutes on top because we don't have a nice little adapter. We'll, we'll have to use the nose cone there. But So what I'm contemplating right now is I'm going to... Uh, the empty mass of this is uh, 1.5 tons. So we really only need two of these parachutes to deal with it if we're going to try and bring it back. So maybe moving these solar panels here, getting four of them instead, doesn't look great honestly. You never want a little square thing in the middle of a round thing like that. Hmm. Uh, but uh, radio on parachutes. We do have other solar panels here of course but they're somewhat blocked by the tanks themselves so that's an issue. So we could maybe bring it back you can see uh, by the way these tanks uh, just uh, do attach radially to this tank all on their own if you orient them properly and so I've just sort of tilted them a little bit using the angle the rotate tool here uh, to make it look a little bit more streamlined uh, I'm not guaranteeing we'll bring it back it's 10,000 funds so it might be worth it I think I'm gonna need to unlock some parts uh, just as a forewarning uh, the scale of this looks like the launcher should be at uh, 2.5 meters instead of 1.25 meters but I'll, I'll experiment with uh, certain configurations before deciding on that, alright? So I'll come back to you with the launcher design. Okay, so I've decided to go with a semi-reusable launch vehicle. And if the payload was just a little bit lighter, it'd be a fully reusable launch vehicle. But in this case, we need these boosters to help us out. So we have uh, these uh, smallest solid rocket boosters to give us a lift initially because otherwise the the thrust weight ratio of this engine isn't good enough so I unlocked the skipper and just these largest tanks so you see I didn't unlock the smaller versions of the 2.5 meter tanks just the largest ones which are the most cost efficient as far as I'm concerned I mean uh, in terms of unlocking these are actually expensive oddly enough I also unlocked uh, this advanced inline stabilizer so that we can control this better and uh, obviously the skipper itself uh, I have not unlocked the Poodle. The Skipper is much more useful, in fact. And the Poodle is somewhat, I mean, redundant with the LV-909. If you can smell, yeah, I mean, it is somewhat uh, redundant with the LV-909. Uh, the LV-909 is a little bit more flexible in terms of how much, you could put three of them or two of them as necessary. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I've unlocked. And so basically we're trying to return this center stack here. Uh, it'll be tricky because we don't have the largest lander legs. We only have these landing struts and I'm not too sure. Obviously this would work a lot better with the larger lander legs, but we don't have them. So we will see. Uh, this has four, uh, not four, eight parachutes on top here. So they're ringed like that. I'm relying on struts to keep this thing stable through this these odd joints here. But otherwise, there is our craft. Total mass, 81.9 tons. A lot of that is these boosters. We are going to light the center engine initially. It needs to burn some of its fuel off before we get to the point where we release the boosters. Otherwise, it won't have a thrust weight ratio of 1. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, this... This portion should have more than 4,500 meters per second of delta V, though not much more, just enough more so that we can reliably retrieve it. 
So the goal is to retrieve this bottom part. And uh, yeah, we shall see. All right, so let's take this out and see if it works. Uh, 47,000 funds, it's quite expensive, so I would like to bring this back. It'd be quite a tragedy to this agency if this fails. Okay, let's go. So yeah, throttle up, SAS on, light main engine, and go. And we need to throttle back the main engine. Probably to around there. All right, so obviously this thing has way more than the, the 6,900 meters per second of delta V, and the reason for that is because the Rockmax 48.7S is just more efficient with the larger fuel load. So now our mission is a little bit different. We're eventually going to try and bring this back, and so that's added to the mission. Oh, should probably run at full power right away. This wasn't very good. Yeah, the, I sort of created a weird situation for myself. I thrust limited the SRBs to 80% and I throttled this down to one third. I definitely didn't calculate all that out beforehand what throttle I should use. So that is something that could be calculated beforehand but I did not do so. So I was just sort of trying things randomly and obviously in this situation that was not a good idea. The net result is that we're going to have to go higher before we start turning. Obviously this is not the most complex reusable system you could devise. This is rather one of the more simple reusable systems you could devise and therefore not exactly the best. But simplicity does have its benefits. If you do want to reduce the thrust weight ratio, uh, not thr the amount of delta V you need to get to carbon orbit, what you want is a higher thrust weight ratio initially, to a certain limit. Uh, the point, the limit that you want, is the point where your vehicle is going at terminal velocity throughout the launch, and that's only because of the way Kerbal Space Program's aerodynamics is right now. Uh, in the next version of Kerbal Space Program, that will change. It will not be limited to terminal velocity. That's that's only because of the weird aerodynamics. So in real life, there's, there's no benefit to limiting your vehicle to terminal velocity uh, during launch. That's not a thing. It's just a factor in real, because of how Kerbal Space Program calculates aerodynamics in this version. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Uh, I, I want stage only right now. This is the time for stage only. I'm gonna reserve a hundred units of liquid fuel in order to deorbit this. So we'll get as close to... Okay, well it says we're in orbit. Let's see if we are. Um, no, not, not bad, not bad. So it'll be even better if we start the skipper going at full steam initially so we don't lose velocity but we are in a stable orbit and I'll leave it there um, actually I'll make it a little bit higher and that's because I've done calculations well I've done testing not calculations uh, to figure out how to bring it back down to the KSC and those that testing started out at 80 kilometers I don't have anything for 70 kilometers which is very close to the atmosphere Okay, so this is in a stable orbit, and now we can proceed with decoupling the mission. Activating the mission's engines. Alright, so it is ready for transfer to... to Joule. So transfer to Joule is its next thing, but we want to bring this back down. So according to my testing it was 35 kilometers what we wanted was uh, the periapsis to be over this peninsula at 35 kilometers now the planet's gonna rotate a little bit so I'm gonna lead it off a little bit it does depend a little bit on drag and how how the heck drag is calculated in the program right now but 
shouldn't vary too much. Uh, this, uh, the numbers, so 35 kilometers if you're at 80 kilometers in altitude, and then you'd set it to 30 kilometers if you're at 100 kilometers in altitude over here. And 120 kilometers over here, I think it was 26 kilometers for the periapsis over here. And yeah, what that would do is it would make you more likely to overshoot than undershoot. So you're more likely to overshoot the KSC at those points. So those are actually the, the highest altitudes that you want to be at on uh, setting your periapsis. Lower than that will get you further inland. So initially I want to try and overshoot rather than undershoot because that will give me the opportunity to use the engine to adjust. Whereas if I undershoot, I would actually have to flip the rocket around because it's going tail first. I'm going to have to flip the rocket around in order to adjust, which is not acceptable of course so we don't want to have to flip the flip around in order to adjust our approach so it's better to overshoot not by too much of course because then you won't be able to adjust at all okay here it's just uh, 44.2 meters per second and yeah I guess I can go now okay so let's try 35 kilometers and see how close we get We've got, we've got actually a substantial amount of fuel left. Now the reason I put the extra reaction wheel on is mainly to keep this thing standing straight up once we touch down. I'm hoping that that will help with that, keep the thing stable. The, the risk is just that the thing topples. That's the number one risk in returning these launch vehicles back and trying to recover them. Okay, we're approaching the coast of our home continent and this is typically my adjustment point. And if I'm higher than 34 kilometers on crossing the coastline, I know I'm too far and that certainly seems to be the case right now. We also seem to have an inclination issue. We're a little bit south of the KSC, but I'm well. I guess I could correct, try to correct that a little bit. We don't have that much fuel though. Let's try that. Maybe a little bit more. Of course, at this point, it's largely a matter of just testing and experience. And I, I wouldn't say I have a lot of that on recovering vehicles like this. There are others who have come before me who have done more. Definitely. Still very high. So, uh, I don't know, it seems to be bringing us in okay taking a look at how far we go here versus how far the the touchdown point comes in it looks like it's pretty well balanced launch clamp say 82 81 80 kilometers away Timing of parachute deployment obviously important here too, and I'm gonna delay it a little bit. It, yeah, I'm probably just gonna wait as long as possible because uh, don't don't be deceived here. The we're start gonna start going in pretty sharply soon because we're losing velocity. And so you see our descent becomes steeper and steeper like this. The only issue is maybe I'm going to land in the water there. So yeah, I think... Um... Okay, I'll deploy parachutes now. 
I don't really want to hit this hill here, but as long as we pass that, ah, there's another hill here. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to 7.1 meters per second. Now you really want that under 6 at a minimum. So I'm going to use engine power to take care of that, but only when we get closer to the ground so we don't run out of fuel, of course. And I'm probably going to try to bring it under 4 if possible. Again, depends on how quickly I run out of fuel. Uh, it looks like it might tip over, but you know, with the larger landing struts, I think it would have been safe, and at least we re recovered it. We got ninety-seven point eight percent of the value, four point one kilometers away from the KSC, twenty-seven thousand funds returned. So excellent uh, work, though. Yeah, uh, we would like to see it not lean so much. Let's say. I'm not sure whether it would have tipped over or not, but it was sure acting like it. Alright, let's continue with our dual mission and get its transfer underway. Okay, so I've planted a dual transfer the usual way. In other words, find a place around on this side of the orbit such that my outward trajectory lines up with Kerbin's own orbit. And sure enough, we hit dual at pretty high altitude, uh, 1,484,000 kilometers. But that's because we've got this 1.3 degree difference. And so what I'm going to do is plot the mid-course plane change here now, just to see how close I can get to make sure that I don't need to adjust any further on my initial burn. If it turns out that we can't get very close with the mid-course plane change, then obviously there's something wrong with my initial burn. But as long as we can get close to Joule, that's all right. And we need to get, I mean, eventually we have, we'll have to get into its atmosphere. But here, it's probably good enough to get below 20,000. Oh, well, there's a Val encounter. That's a good sign. 20,000 kilometers. There we go, and Leif encounter. And the reason why I picked 20,000 kilometers is because that's around where you end up with Leif as well. So that's okay. That'll be fine. So initial burden is 1,931, you see there. The mid-course plane change will take 134, well within our budget, of course. Okay, here we are, getting closer to the target orbit. And we'll see how far off we are. It looks like we'll actually be saving some Delta V. And that probably means that my initial maneuver was not ideal. Okay, that looks like it matches. Uh, not, the, not the part where we've corrected inclination, but taking a look at our, our approach out, it's not too far off. Let's get rid of this maneuver and see... Oh, that, that looks quite different, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay, so it'll cost a little bit more at the mid-course plane change to correct our deviation from our initial burn here at Kerbin. But for another 100 meters per second on Delta V, not too bad within our budget, like I said. And so, no problems. Let's make sure the probe is going to be well provisioned for electric charge, which means rolling it around probably. Okay, I think that's a safe way to leave it. And so we will turn to the tracking station to time warp to the Duna transfer. Okay, so I've clicked on the probe to make sure that we pay attention to what it's up to so it doesn't reach the planned maneuver before we do our transfer to Duna. But otherwise, time warping. Oh, good thing I paid attention. Looks like we're only a few days away from Duna transfer, but I think I'm gonna have to deal with this probe first. Okay, yeah, well, let's jump to it. Let's take a good look at what it's actually doing, because it's bound to have some issues. Looks like it's planning to put us at 5,000 instead of our nice close encounter. That's not nice of it. 
Tylo, Val, Leif. We can encounter them all. Huh? That's a very definite Leif encounter right there, but... I just want to... We have to get into orbit around Jewel. We don't want to get into orbit around Leif. We could air break around Leif, but then we'd get into Leif orbit. Lots of encounters. This is quite a time, huh? Okay, well that will do nicely. Okay, let's go back to the tracking station and get to Duna transfer. Okay, I think that's alright. I think that's 45 degrees. So, yeah, I think we're good. Let's put together our Kerbald mission to Duna. You know, it might be alright not to complicate matters. We could just take this part off. Dump all this. Dump all of this. Get a command pod. There you are. Uh, parachute. More parachutes. Make sure you're not obstructing the hatch. Thank you very much. Put all this back on. Put some lander legs. Whoa, that's not very good. Okay, so I've made some adaptations, and, well, this might not be the best of ideas, but I've put a separate descent stage LV-909 here. So, the LV-909 will conduct a transfer to Duna, it will uh, conduct a landing, of course, and part of the takeoff as well. Uh, so, we've got that going for us, and then this is the rest of the ascent stage and the transfer back to Kerbin. So, this descent stage is expendable. It's just going to be left there. It costs about 5,000 funds. Um, maybe a little bit less than that. But then this will return to Kerbin. Plenty of parachutes and such. I think I should slap a thermometer on as well. Just for good measure. We are obviously not carrying the goo or the science junior this time. Um, as far as the launcher is concerned, I added the larger boosters. Uh, in the hope that having upgraded boosters will give us a little bit s more smoothness on the ascent instead of having uh, uh, that part where it slows down. And we'll run the skipper uh, at a higher thrust level right from the get-go. So what's expendable on here? The descent stage and the boosters. Uh, otherwise, if uh, the, our last attempt is any indication, we'll recover about half of this uh, on recovering the center stack. If we can do that again, and I hope we can. Though, again, it could tip over and then that will be an issue. Uh, I think our contract, the, the Duna landing contract, would cover the cost of all this. So that's not a problem, as long as we uh, manage to make it. Okay, so Jeb has uh, some added experience. Let's send... I mean, it's it's the first Duna landing, though. That's that's a tricky thing. But I think we'll send Lemdorf. He has the best name, I think. Lemdorf Kerman will be the first to head over to Duna. This is a pretty heavy vehicle, especially thanks to the boosters. But, yep. Yeah. Interesting. Let's Let's just give it a go. Let's just give it a go. Okay, Delta V wise, this is probably excessive for sending a Kerbal over to Duna and returning him safely back to Kerbin. But how do I put this? I don't want to fail. <laughs> I don't want to fail on this one. So, uh, and uh, if you're trying to do the same thing, I I don't want you to fail either. So, let us let us attempt the most successful possible arrangement together. All right, here we go with Lemdorf. A little bit of a wiggle on the boosters, but I think they'll be all right. I've got to throttle a little bit back on the main engine, but not too much. Should have probably told those boosters to throttle. Uh, I should have thrust limited those boosters. Anyway, we're better off than we were last time. I think we're actually okay for rotation, but I'll give it a little bit of time. Given the result last time, we definitely have the Delta V2 orbit. The payload is much heavier than last time, that's why I added the larger boosters. The payload is 8 tons. Sure seems like we're way worse off than last time. 
Well, considering the heavier payload, I guess it's not too bad. Uh, just barely making it into orbit there. Let's get to 70 at least. Alright. Okay, let's get out of stage only. Well, 8 tons is pushing it for this thing. For a recoverable launcher. With just a skipper at the bottom. Alright. Lemdorf. Let's just, uh, just for safety's sake, let me just decode from here. There you go. Alright, well, you'll be on your way soon enough, but let's take care of the launch vehicle. Okay. But obviously we're not going to have much fuel to do any corrections on the way down. So... Okay, here we go, approaching the coast of the home continent. Probably still a bit high. Yeah. Now last time we did need some fuel to slow down on the scent. Oh, we're still a bit off on inclination too. We don't have much fuel at all. That's gonna have to do. Perhaps we'll deploy the parachutes a little bit earlier this time. Okay, let's see about them parachutes. Uh, yeah. Doesn't look like the gentlest of terrain there, but, you know, it's not the mountains. 6.6 6 meters per second, waiting as much as I can before using the engine. Okay, uh, I didn't get to it in time. Okay, I'll recover what I've got. Okay, uh, which part do we actually recover? Okay, we, we actually recovered the launcher part. I was, I was wondering if the probe core actually detached from the rest of the launcher. It didn't seem like that. I wonder what actually exploded. It wasn't one of the battery packs, wasn't the inline stabilizer wasn't one of the fuel tanks. I think it was just the decoupler on the top actually. The de uh, yeah, the 2.5 meter decoupler that we have there. Anyway, we got 26,000 funds, more than half of the launch cost. All right. So that's good. Let's go back to the mission and transfer Lemdorf over to Duna. Okay, looks like we're in excellent position because just on the initial burn out from Kerbin without any mid-course plane change or anything like that, we could potentially get to Duna periapsis of 384 kilometers. So that's that's excellent. And so we'll try to aim for that. Though of course on these things there may be some deviation. As we have discussed. Especially since we're very close to Kerbin right now. We're only uh, 72 kilometers. Our periapsis is just 70, right? Yeah, 70 kilometers right there. Will be a little bit higher when we do the maneuver, but not by much. I uh, could have put some lights on, I suppose. Didn't do that. We didn't have a ladder. We had rungs, but not an actual ladder. So Lemdorf is gonna have to try and use his EVA pack to get back up to the pod after he sets down on the surface and plants his flag. Okay, there we go. Uh, 600 kilometers is excellent. And so that's what we'll go with for Lemdorf. Lemdorf is currently in the dark. Let's get him into the light before we leave him. Okay, that's fine. Lemdorf is venturing out to Duna in an attempt to land upon it and plant his flag. All right. So with that, we've got two missions out. And then we also need to do the Eve mission. Uh, we'll probably start off with that in the next episode. So, lots to do, and with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.